What's up, guys? Welcome back to the podcast. Today we are joined by Patrick from Groby.tv. He's also a YouTube personality. And uh, Patrick, do you have a home theater business or something over there? What, what do you guys do over there? Um, yeah, I'm a typical dealer. I'm selling all the products to guys like you. Yeah. <laughs> That means uh, I have found my company, Groby, in the near of Düsseldorf in the west part of Germany 20 years ago. Uh, I started with projectors uh, because I saw in my former job, I was working for a company which made presentation products. And, you know, maybe the flat panels you took on the overhead projector and then you could see the presentation from the computer and from video. When I saw the first time that it's possible to do it with video, I said, OK, this is the future. We will have all big pictures at home. So it started in the end of the 90s with the first projectors, no small compact one. So and I decided to make my own business and then I, I founded the company Groby. So we are focused on end users to sell products from projectors to AV receivers, loudspeakers, whole solutions. So you have like a retail location? Yeah, we have a studios. Um, the idea is that we have studios. You, you know, we, we sell entertainment products and I think you need to really feel and you need to hear it and you need to feel it like at home. So we have not the typical retail store. Uh, we have studios where you have the cinema chairs, where you have different loudspeakers. We have a lot of very interesting content. And yeah, this is so easy because the products we sell are make so much fun. So we need not yeah. to speak too much like, you know. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> how's the um how has how's COVID impacted your uh, sales over there uh yeah COVID is 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 an extremely um extremely thing uh when we started in march in germany with the first lockdown i was really a little bit frightened and uh, pessimistic because we had the, at first the product problem we need to know that the industry has really hard problems to produce the products we have components which are not complete. And so if you have only one component not for your production, the whole AV receiver is not ready to sell and to, yeah. to, or to ship. So we had a big warehouse, but in open words, in the last months, it was hard time. We have made a good job with all the team. Everybody was okay. Nobody was um, ill. And uh, now we have the second lockdown. It's really hard because it was at Christmas, Christmas time. And you know how important the Christmas time is for all of us in the business. And what I said for 21 is um, it will be hard with the, with the availability of the products. As the industry has really tough problems to, to ship the products and to produce. As I first to produce and then to ship. You know the, the big fire on AKM, on the factory AKM. Yeah. Yeah. And this is really a hard impact for all of us worldwide. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So 21 is not will be not an easy job. Hmm. What we are doing the best. <laughs> did you uh so did you find that more people are buying stuff during during the pandemic? Uh, yeah. Everybody's home? Of course, yeah. Also the people are at home and the people and, and we made a lot of live live interviews and we made a lot of live presentations to to to, to be in contact with our customers. Yeah. As we have a shop, that's one thing. But the other thing is we have made a lot of live interviews like this one here with our suppliers. We explained products and um, we explained the benefit of the products. And yeah, now we are available by telephone from eight o'clock in the evening. Um, so that's the best way to be in contact with our customers and of course the customers you know the numbers of netflix and amazon and so they are at home and streaming i think now everybody knows what streaming is Although my mother is now 82 and she knows perfectly to use the netflix account because he's doing and looking the the queen yeah. <laughs> as an example so yeah. it's not it's not it's nothing which has to do with the with the age of the people so it's really um it is <sighs> It's the other side of this crazy world and crazy time we have in the moment. We have industries where there's nothing happening and we have other industries where there's a high demand and we are toy, toy, toy industry where there's a higher demand. Yes. Do you, um, do you sound, do you feel like actual home theater systems like separates and AV receiver speakers are selling more or do you find that sound bars sell more? As a we, especially as Groby, are selling more on loudspeakers and AV receivers because yeah. we are focused really, and this is one of the main topic here from today, our, our, our meeting, is 3D sound. Yeah. <laughs> Look, we have, a, we, have a, we, have a, we have a market which is really 
full of technology. Nearly everybody has loudspeakers at home. Nearly everybody has an AV receiver at home. Uh, and most of them have stereo and 5.1. But uh, there is a high potential market to explain the people of the benefit of the 3D sound. And 3D sound means mostly you need only four additional loudspeakers and maybe a new amplifier. And then you have the world of 3D sound at your home. And I think there is a there is a big market for all of us, for the industry, because the people which heard the first time 3D sound, from 100 people, 101 likes it. Yeah. <laughs> it's not so that you say for 100 people, maybe five say, no, yeah, I hear maybe a little bit of difference. <laughs> no, they like it directly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so guys, the topic of today, so Patrick wanted to come on today, so we talk about like bad mixes in Hollywood. And the type of mixes that we're getting on discs and streaming, how come we're not hearing a lot of activity through the through the height speaker through the height speakers or even the lower surround speakers? Most notably, recently, Wonder Woman eighty four. I think you had watched my video and where I said I pointed out that it was pretty silent up in the in the top speakers there. Like you've had some direct connection with Dolby and Oro and and like the film camera guys, Aerie. Um, what is your takeaway? What have you heard from those guys? How come we're not getting stellar mixes from these uh, 4K Dolby Atmos DTS-X soundtracks. And this is a mixture, I think, of reasons we have that we have this result in the moment. We are now in the year of number six or number seven, uh, where we have uh, the Dolby Atmos, Aura 3D, and then at least uh, DTS-X. And on one side, the industry, especially the hardware industry, said, hey, we are supporting all of the 3D formats, and now we are waiting for the content, which makes the industry. And this was not really happening. In the beginning, there was a little bit, and they said to me, no, we have 100 titles of Dolby Atmos and DTSX. But when we heard a little bit more inside the titles, then we find out that nearly, nearly nothing happened in the upper layer. And in open words, when I hear a helicopter in a movie, I need not to hear only the first helicopter. I like to hear the second and the third and the fourth helicopter because the industry is telling me that this sound makes the sound so realistic like you, be, like you will be live there. So this was not really happening. And um, the crazy thing in Germany is that we have uh, this, uh, this the country is looking the most movies dubbed. That means we hear it in German. So this is also a difference. That means not every movie which is announced in Dolby Atmos is automatically announced in German. Okay, so what is the end of the day of our problem? We have not enough content or good content. And um, so the app mixer is one way that we have a good alternative feeling of 3D sound. And there is Aura 3D and the DTS-X neural um, app mixer. And especially the Aura 3D app mixer, we would say, is nearly the best and most authentic app mixer for, the, for 3D sound. So maybe we speak later about it, what we have demonstrated in videos and so on. In the last two, three years, I spoke especially with people which are working in the business of making movies and making the sounds. And especially, uh, I remember a wizard in a studio we have in Germany. It's called Ari Media. Ari is most of your uh, fans known as a producer of a very famous camera where most of the Hollywood movies are made. Ari is a camera maker, but also Ari is uh, a company which makes movies, um, the, the, the cut and the editing and uh, the mixes of sounds. And it was surprising us that we heard some German productions, family movie as an example, which has an unbelievable good Dolby Atmos mix. We said, hey, what's going on there? We have seven loudspeakers down. We have all the six loudspeakers there. And it's so, it's, it sounds so natural. It's fantastic. So we were in contact with the guys and they said, yes, this is normal for us because why are you asking? We said, yeah, when I have a movie like Aquaman, I, I can really count on the whole movie, which is a 300 million or billion uh, blockbuster. I can count there is one minute, there is one minute, and maybe all over the whole movie, it's maybe 20 minutes or 10 minutes. But on the other day, but on the, but on the, on the rest of the movie, there's silence, there's nothing. So what could be or what can be the reason? And we heard a lot of times, it seems to be that's only the simple money. <laughs> that makes on one side we make the Dolby Atmos logo on the on the on the on the movie as here on the back maybe very small mostly yeah but uh, it, it's 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 this is not a guarantee that you have really a good Atmos mix when I have a 5.1 mix an open words uh, that's normal that when I see a car from the right to the left then I hear the car from the right to the left nobody would say I hear only the second car or only every third car no every car you hear or when it's coming from there to there I hear it driving through my 
living room. But on the movies like um, Apocalypse Now, uh, Apocalypse Now is a movie which is now, I don't, I don't know how many times they have made it re-edited or whatever, but the last version last year, I know that the director said to the camera and to the audience, I'm so happy that I have now a new technology like Atmos and it sounds so perfectly like I like to have it in the 70s, but it was not available and so. And I took it in my, in my displayer and I started with the famous sequence when the helicopters are flying through the beach and you have the uh, overture. And I said, something defect? Is the cable out or what happened? There's nothing. Do you hear no helicopter? There's no helicopter there. Later on, some minutes later, you hear one helicopter for a short second or period. And I said, hey, come on, what's going on there? And then I mixed it up with my Auro and I was happy. <laughs> yeah, right. I, uh, that's part of that's the reason crazy. why... Yeah, we're talking about, for the guys that didn't understand the accent, uh, Apocalypse Now. <laughs> um, I've heard a lot of reviews saying that it's got a really good Atmos mix, but when I saw it, I wasn't impressed at all, so I didn't do a review on it. And um, how do, you, do, you, do you believe a lot of these reviewers where they're like, hey, you know, audio sounds awesome, but then when you listen it to yourself, it's like, it's a big letdown. Do you know, you know what I'm saying? No, please repeat again. So when when I when I did when I was going to do the review for Apocalypse Now, I've read yeah. all kinds of stellar stellar reviews about the video quality and the audio quality. Yeah, and that the up the up mixing was really good. The new Atmos mix was was awesome, but when I heard it, it wasn't it wasn't that good. It was like the same as your experience. Yeah, we have the same opinion. Yeah, do you find like reviewers that they give like falsified <laughs> info? Or do they know what they're listening for? Or? I have no idea if the reviewers are looking with a sound bar or if they are looking with an app mix or whatever. Also, in open words, what is the what is the idea behind 3D sound? Mm -hmm. uh, of course, I heard sometimes people uh, when I made videos in the in the in the last years uh, where we have switched off the with the, the down layer or the the, the bed and then only yeah. the upper layer. The people said sometimes to in comments to me, "Oh, Patrick Knight likes to have all the time that the sound is coming there." Yeah. No, that's wrong. I like to have the sound like it is in the situation. Yeah. And I, of course, I don't need a, a, a voice over me because the people are sitting on the bed. No, of course not. But if there's a helicopter, I like to have it. Mm -hmm. So, and, and this is so crazy. And uh, for, my, for me, is the understanding. And this was what the, the industry was promising us. And it's possible because the systems are doing the job. 3D is when you make it really good. It is fantastic. You forget that you are living or that you are staying in your small living room. You have the feeling you are in an opera. You have the feeling you are under the helicopter. You have the feeling you are in a stormy weather or whatever. It is possible. So the question is, why is the guy which is maybe mixing this, or is it maybe the guy which has the money in the pocket? Is he telling to him you have only maybe three hours to make a mix in Dolby Atmos? Because we and you, I think, no, it is a little bit complicated. It, it is a lot of more work to do. When you see the small balls and on Dolby Atmos, you need to switch it to the right, to the left, to the top, to the bottom. That's yeah. a lot of work, of course. But they forgot the customs. They forgot the, the audience. They are not buying the hardware and to get maybe only uh, a movie with uh, two minutes. We did it. <laughs> we, made, we, made a, we made a nice thing. American Sniper. You know the movie American Sniper? Yeah. This is a movie which is available uh, in the cinemas in Aorus 3D and Dolby Atmos. And from my understanding, this movie got an, an Oscar for the audio mix. Mm -hmm. And what we did is we had a, a, a student and I said to the student, Come on, take a seat in my studio and then take a uh, paper and a watch and you write me down every second, every minute of the American Sniper movie when you hear something from there. And he had to hear the whole movie only with the top layer, the whole movie. It is not three minutes over the whole movie effects in the top layer. Right. So, yeah, sorry. That's, sad. <laughs> that's, that's crazy. That's, yeah, that's crazy. That's not good. And if you heard it right on with the Aura 3D or DTL Neural X, it makes it is more logical. It makes more fun. <laughs> you know what's uh, what comes in handy now that I that I've been doing these reviews is that I have the trin off. I don't know if you use the trin off or not, but it shows yeah, you what are. you're it shows you what you're seeing or what you're listening to. Absolutely, it's, yeah, it's like the best thing ever for for audio. Um, and a lot of movies just a lot of movies just don't have much going on up top there. It's usually just black, like the speakers aren't even active. Do you think? 
have you asked any of the Dolby people or DTS or oral folks? Yeah. Is, how different is the mix when it comes from the actual cinemas to the house? Do they change it? Like how, how does that translate? Have you asked? Um, yeah, we, we, we made a very, we made a test. Um, uh, what is it called? It's on the road one, one and a half years ago. We made it with Blade Runner. Blade Runner 20, what is it? Four, nine, no? Yeah, the second part of Blade Runner. Um, I, 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 I know a guy which is an owner of a cinema. And I said to the guy, can we switch off all the loudspeakers on the, on the bottom? Is bottom yeah, right yeah. word in English or what is it? Is it on the bed or what is yeah, it? Yeah, they call it the bed layer. The bed layer. Also, yeah. Can we switch off the bed layer that we hear only the top layer and we compare this with the UHD in Dolby Atmos English if we have on the, right, on the same parts in the movie the same effects? Or if you have maybe less, mm -hmm. or maybe more, I don't know. And it was nearly absolutely the same. Yeah, it was nearly absolutely the same. the The movie, I like the movie very much. I'm a big fan of Blade Runner, and the second part I like also. But I don't like really the Dolby Atmos mix. Why? Mostly in this mix is only music, yeah. only music. And if he's flying in his uh, ship there, and you hear the rain, you hear nothing. Or if you have the bombs which are coming on this uh, from, from, from the top, you hear nothing. Or the earth is flying to him, you hear nothing. It is all only in the, in the what is it called? Bed layer. I learned it in the evening on the rest <laughs> yeah, of yeah, yeah. On the bed layer. It's only there. And when I mix it up with the app mixer, then are parts also there. And that is logical. As a whole, the app mixer makes a better job. That's crazy. Mm -hmm. Okay. So we were comparing this and we don't see really a difference. Of course, I know very well uh, some guys from Dolby, and uh, we have a very good, closed, open, I would say, communication. And from my understanding, uh, they are also not very happy with a lot of mixes. But the problem is they have no influence. They can speak only with them, go to the dinner and say, hey, guys, when you are working with my Dolby, please uh, use it a little bit more, more professional, or invest more money. And you know, and it's an open secret, sometimes they are also... Um, investing money in studios and helping supporting for hardware and so on, that more and more studios can mix in Dolby Atmos. Okay, but on the rest of the day, it's a question of the producer and of the guys which are working on the on the mixing table. Yeah, right. So you feel that uh, what is your your favorite up mixing is is Oral 3D. You feel like yeah, that's the best job. Absolutely, absolutely. Also, we have compared it so many times and. Uh, do you know that in, in a Porsche, you know the Porsche, no? Porsche car company, yeah. do you know that you can buy a Porsche with our 3D? Really? Yes. <laughs> uh, three, or three, four years ago, there was a test in the Porsche company together with Burmester. You know Burmester, it's a high-fee, high-end company from Berlin in Germany. And there was a Mr. Burmester, and he was meeting or meeting uh, Wilfred in, in Belgium, and he was absolutely impressed by the demonstration of Wilfred. And on this time, he was one of the main supplier for audio electronics for the car industry, and especially for Porsche. And uh, the Porsche guys were testing 3D sound systems for the cars. And they tested really different systems. You know, in the car business, you hear sometimes this is a 3D system and this, but there's not really a name for it. It's only called 3D. They're working with a DSP and whatever. So they mixed, they made tested with, uh, with our 3D. And on the end of the day, they said, this is the most natural mixer we ever heard. So they started in a Panamera. Now they have it in the in the Cayenne, and um, on the end of the day, it's now in the what is it called? The electronic car, sha 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 sha, whatever. A Taycan in the Taycan. This is a 100% electronic car. So you can decide to buy the standard audio equipment. It's Bose or the Bose, or you invest a little bit more money, and then you have really a Burmester Auro 3D systems, and you see really loudspeakers. They are in the ceiling. They have really the two levels. They have made special loudspeakers because it's not so easy when you have an airbag and a loudspeaker together <laughs> and the airbag is coming you, you need to take a look that the loudspeaker is not first coming to you so they have developed very nice new housings it's fantastic in detail and it sounds amazing so if you have a porsche dealer in your area take a look and sit down it's amazing really good so the oro the oro speaker layout to get it to work properly yeah i believe they have to be like you they have to be above each speaker am i correct on that 
Now, yeah, you need minimum four speakers. A problem in the industry, and this is a little bit of critic, which we, we, we spoke really open to, to the Dolby guys. I, I, I think you have a problem when you have on one side a fantastic system in the cinemas, and then you explained um, for the end users at home that you can have the same experience when you are working only with two loudspeakers on the ceiling. Sorry. Mm -hmm. Also, this is for me um, a reducing uh, only to 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 be in contact with a lot of potential customers, but then you are then you are losing your quality. As you know, what happened with THX when THX was starting to offer loudspeakers for one hundred dollar and make a big THX logo, a lot yeah. of cinemas were very unhappy about this because they said, "Hey, we are selling and paying a lot of money every month and for license, and you are now printing your THX logo on every of uh, of a product where there's a loudspeaker inside." Yeah, okay, yeah. so and just five minutes ago, really five minutes ago, before our live chat, I've got again uh, a press information about the smart speaker Echo Studio, which is supporting Dolby Atmos. Yeah, in open words, you and me know, it's in most yeah. of our customers and visitors, which are looking here now and in the audience, that this is a big difference to work with this, I would say, cemetery urn, yeah, <laughs> which has a lot of loudspeakers inside, yeah. and to check it and compare it with five and four loudspeakers there. This is not the same, but the logo is the same. So I think this is a dangerous way. And Auro needs and said again, again, and again, you need four loudspeakers. Because if we say we would like to work only with two loudspeakers, or maybe we work with yeah, reflectives they did later on, but not in the beginning, then it's not the quality we like to hold for the end user and to, to, to would say, to guarantee for the end user. So you need four loudspeakers, five and four, nothing more. Huh. And then, then you are in the 3D uh, audio heaven. <laughs> See, I, I always feel like with my setups, because my, my, my height speakers are, they're not really in line with my left and right speakers and my, my side speakers. They're kind of on my ceiling. So every time I do the oral up mixing, it doesn't sound, I don't, I don't feel it sounds right. Yeah, yeah. Also, the, 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 the problem is, um, let's, okay, let's go back to the basics. Also, the first layout was by Dolby Atmos, you have to install your loudspeakers in the ceiling. Yeah. And this direction. Okay. So I think, I have no idea, but maybe your wife and my wife, of course, would say, you are not going in my living room on the ceiling with your loudspeakers. This is nearly not possible. So it was, this was a big problem for this system, which was created for the cinema professional market and to copy it into the private living home market. So that was one of the reasons why they started directly with reflective loudspeakers. Ref reflect the loudspeakers. On the IFA, the big exhibition in Berlin, the first system I saw was from Onkyo with a reflective loudspeaker system. And this was the start for them to go into the private market with the Dolby Atmos system. Okay. But the other thing is, from the basic idea, what happened above you the whole day from sounds? Where are the sources? Are they really above you? Or it's more from the side because you have reflections and a lot of other things like this? Mm -hmm. Above you is a helicopter movie. Okay, but how many helicopter movies we are looking? <laughs> yeah, not so much. So the more logical way is to have it in this 25 or 30 degree way, which you which uh, you can install it by really install it on the on the wall, and you go not on the ceiling, which is much much easier from the from the from the installation way, and later on from the hearing, because if you have a loudspeakers on the bed layer and you have one on the ceiling. You have really here on the right side in this area, you have a, what is it called? A big black hole. There's nothing. You have it there and you have it there. Okay. But if you have it in one line in the 30 degree roundabout on the, on the wall, it, it makes really a really a closed sound field. And the voice of God, you know, this from, 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 from Auro, they have one loudspeaker. You can, as an open verse, if it's there or it's not there, I think you don't hear it really much. It's so less. And then you see what happened in the last years by the layouts from Dolby. You can see more and more this layout is also supported. So what we can is we have one layout, officially one layout for all three formats. And this is a big breakthrough for all of us because as a customer, I need not to decide which is my layout that I can see maybe or hear maybe only 50% of the movies. 
Now we have one layout for all the three formats. And of course, we have more and more manufacturers which have all the three formats integrated, like, Do yeah. like Denon and uh, Marans. So you need only to switch between uh, the, 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 the button to Auro, to Dolby, or to DTSX. That's all. So that's really simple. That's the best way. And, um, you know, go back to your THX. Do you feel IMAX Enhanced is very much like the same way? <laughs> How do you feel about that? So I like really uh, IMAX, and I'm very I'm very happy that I have since around about, uh, since end of the year, I have an IMAX cinema now five kilometers from here in Düsseldorf. I'm very happy about this because we had the problem in Germany that we had IMAX theaters in the end of the 80s, 90s, and then they were closed because they were the content not really there. And now we have the Hollywood content inside, and now they are building up the cinemas. And so we got more and more IMAX cinemas in Germany. And I have five, one five kilometers from here. But what happened in the in the end user market was that was really I think a little bit crazy. Also they made the, the they made the end users really nervous because overnight it he sounds now IMAX is coming at home and I need to have now the thirty third or thirty fourth sticker on my AV receiver with the IMAX logo. Otherwise, I have an old machine. But nobody knows what is really behind the IMAX idea, IMAX Enhance and whatever, and what it's supported by the content. And I spoke uh, two weeks ago with uh, a guy. It's called Nico Uran from a magazine. It's called CT. He was the guy which makes a big pre report about the HDMI 2.1 bug. You okay. remember maybe. Yeah. yeah, he was a guy, Nico. And we spoke also about uh, we make the years view back uh, in the live chat. And we spoke also about IMAX and everybody of us was smiling because uh, the, the marketing was in the beginning really big, but it was nothing coming and now we heard nothing. As a, here in Germany, I think was some Sony productions, three, four, five uh, titles, and that's what all, as a nothing. And now if you like to be in contact with somebody of IMAX, nobody's there because yeah, the company yeah. was I've sold tried. Or whatever. I've tried, yeah. I tried to get IMAX to... people on here, yeah. They just, they get anybody, <laughs> can't get anybody to come. Um, yeah. What do you feel, um, like the sound mix for those, have you heard the IMAX enhanced movies? Like Charlie's yeah, Angels? I, I, I had one there and I had the demo uh, there and the crazy thing was this problem with the subwoofer, also with, with the bus, that was really not logical what happened there. So I think nobody's really crying that in the moment this is not there. I don't so for IMAX Enhanced, my understanding is there are no subwoofers in IMAX Enhanced. Like every speaker is full range. Yeah. So for them to bring it out in Denon and Morant's receivers, technically they're not really doing it the right way. Yeah, we had some tough discussions here in Germany. <laughs> nobody really understand the strategy, but the problem was on the end of the phone, there was nobody there which could explain us uh, the idea behind this. So And now we have no content, so why we need to think about it? There's nothing yeah. there. <laughs> yeah, there's nothing there. I mean, I think Sony said they're supposed to come out with like 100 titles this year, but who knows how that's going to be, how it's going to play. Also, in the marketing, the industry is really well. It's sometimes really dangerous for me as a dealer uh, that I, uh, I need to be uh, pay attention that I'm not really repeating all the marketing headlines from my industry. Yeah. Uh, so I, I, I'm between my, my end users and I'm between the industry. And, and sometimes I'm very constructive in my critics to say to the guys, hey, guys, don't tell too much of this and this because it's not the truth or it's only the half of the truth. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So this is sometimes uh, in the industry, the marketing guys have too much power <laughs> to present the products. And sometimes it's better to speak with the engineers because uh, they're, they are much closer to the products and to the application and the quality and what you can do with the products and what they, what they, they really promise they can hold. What's, um, so since you're in Germany, Oro's kind of, I, I would think Oro's big over there. Do you have a lot of cinemas with Oro in Germany? Uh, no. This is a really a tough problem. Um, the problem in, in, in Germany was with the Oro 3D systems. I think we have only two. The problem is if nobody is making Oro 3D uh, audio tracks, nobody needs an Oro 3D system in the, uh, in the cinemas. So um, the, the problem was really that the producers didn't know what it is, Auro 3D, as are here in Germany, most of them, and they didn't hear it. So Adobe is, of course, its power. Adobe is the force. 
<laughs> in the cinema industry. So they have much more possibilities to explain the systems, to present the systems. So it was all focused on that. That it works in other countries different. You know, in Asia, it's our very strong. In China, very strong. Japan, very strong. Mm. Uh, we had They had a good start in America, but I think now it's going a little bit down. But they are alive and they make a lot of very, very nice things. I was uh, two months ago uh, on a live, really world premiere of an Auro, um, uh, Auro presentation. They recorded live in Japan a um, music uh, presentation, also with the piano and with the bus and whatever. And it was transported over a normal internet connection mm. live in Auro 3D. Oh, wow. And you need roundabout only 12 to 14 MB to have an HD video signal and a yeah. high resolution Aura 3D. So from the technical, it was uh, it was um, uh, developed together with NTT. And uh, as of technical wise, it's extremely amazing. And you had a normal PC for uh, the receiving the signal. It was connected by HDMI on the big cinema projector. And I had the feeling I was really sitting in the hall where it was recorded in Japan. So it was unbelievable, good, fantastic. And I hope we will have in the, in the near future solutions that you can offer to the end users. It's good for the industry. It's good also for the music industry because live concerts we will not have in the next months. So it's a way maybe to give me the feeling of a live concert in 3D sound with a normal internet connection. Yeah, that's interesting. Do you, do you think that uh, Oro is going to survive or do you think they're just kind of going to fade away? You think they can still no, stick around? No, no, I think not. They have, they have. As a, the point is, when you see, you hear nothing from them here, maybe in Germany, it makes it, it, it means not that they are not alive. The world is much bigger than Germany, as an example, or maybe Belgium. And when you see in China how successful them they are there, or in the Asian markets, it's really huge markets. Yeah, and I hope so um, that they will go, go the way. <laughs> it will go further. Have you um have you heard the uh the oral version of Blade Runner, twenty forty nine? This was crazy. Um, the oral three D version of Blade Runner was not officially sold in Germany. Yeah, and I don't know why. If somebody had influence that they it was not allowed for them to publicate this because this was a deal of ten Blu rays which made by Sony with oral three D. Yeah. And what we find out that, that they were using, it seems to be that they were using not officially the Auro 3D track, they were using sometimes the Dolby track and mixed it in Auro, converted only in Auro. So we had absolutely the same effects. Passengers is an example of this, if you hear it and compare this. And um, what the difference was, was the movie Jumanji. Yeah. The movie Jumanji was really different in the Dolby Atmos and the Auro tracks, so that was available. But the Blade Runner was not in Germany officially available with Auro 3D. I have no idea because Germany is the biggest market for Auro 3D hardware in Europe. Huh? I, I didn't know that. Yeah, I've been trying to get my hands on uh, Blade Runner Auro forever. I just I can't find it. Nobody has it. It's tough. Yeah, I've been trying yeah, to do yeah. comparisons. I would like to do a comparison with Auro and Dolby, but. Can't find yeah, we, have no, we have now a production here. Of, I can tell you some nice stories here. We have now a production from with Michael Douglas. It, was it called The Game? The movie yeah. The Game. It's older. This one is now is now is now announced or was is now available in our 3D. It is made in our 3 They mix it in our 3D. It seems to be. I have no idea what the background is. Or who was there? Um, on the other side, I was personally involved in a mix of the movie Texas Chainsaw Massacre. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. You know yeah. this very famous yeah. horror. No, what was it in, in New York in the in the in the modern modern, uh, modern art museum? Is it? I think also. Yeah. And the guys which have the rights to make um, a version in 4K is a turbine. You know turbine in Münster is here in Germany, a small city, turbine, turbine. Turbine is the name in English. And the turbine guys are really specialists of, what do you say, re restoration of old movie. And they had the right to make this movie in 4K. And I know one of the guys, and I said to, guys, to the guys, because I heard that they like to make it in Dolby Atmos. I said, okay, Dolby Atmos, this old movie? Okay, but they have the original audio tracks and so on. And I said, okay, what do you think when we make it parallel in Auro 3D? Then you have maybe the first disc available on 4K with both tracks. 
And um, yeah, I spoke with Wilfred. I said, hey, this is this project. And so are you interested? He said, yes, of course I will. And three days later, they were really working in Belgium. And so now is this movie available in Dolby Atmos in an Oro 3D in, in, I think, in English and German? You need to take a look. In another very famous movie, maybe you know, I think you know the movie, is Blues Brothers. Do you know that the movie Blues Brothers is available in Dolby Atmos? Really? <laughs> officially supported by John Landis. Yeah. And they and, were working Oro. with Oro 3D uh, to make the Dolby Atmos mix. Very crazy thing. That's interesting. I'm going to try to, going to, try to pick that up. Yeah, it's kind of odd choices, I would think. Uh, the Texas Chainsaw Massacre, very low budget. And then the Blues Brothers. I mean, maybe that and would sound Blues a little Brothers better. Blues Brothers makes really fun. Blues Brothers is fantastic. Uh, you, know, you know this one here? Yeah, Prince. Yeah. Oh, is that? What is that? This is available in Dolby Atmos. Is that uh, Purple Rain? No, it is... It is Prince Sign of the Times. Oh, Sign of the Times. Oh, it's an album. Sorry. It's an album. Yeah, it's all right. I'm and this is, an album. this is available here in Germany. And this is made by a concert which was made or filmed in Amsterdam. Mm -hmm. And Prince was a little bit crazy and said 24 hours before the concert, he likes to get it filmed on 35 millimeters. <laughs> And they have filmed it with several camera teams in 35 millimeters. That's the reason why we have really a 4K um, transfer. And then they decided to make it in Dolby Atmos and in Oro 3D 11.1. So this concert is really available in Dolby Atmos and Oro 3D. Huh. And it is fantastic. You are so inside this concert and inside this movie. It's amazing. This is also done by Tobin. So we have a very special thing. If you have people which are, have the money and the time to invest into a project like this, you can make fantastic uh, productions. The Blade Runner, the first one, it has a fantastic English uh, Dolby Atmos track. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's one of my favorite. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. So, What's so about music in the US? Is music in Aura 3D and Dolby Atmos, is it a market? Is it well-known music? Or do you know poor audio, the format poor audio? I mean, right now they just kicked off Title with Dolby Atmos. There's, uh -huh. there's a bunch of albums on on Title, yeah. And not too many like concerts, though. I mean, I think there's like a handful of concerts, but that's it, though. So the 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 point is that that the 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 idea or the strategy of the big companies, and that's a little bit crazy. And I hope some of them are looking your channel. <laughs> <laughs> um, all are concentrated on streaming. Yeah. But there is a big market for people which like to have the, the disc in the in the hands. Yeah, yeah? there's a lot of people. Get yeah, better sure. quality. They like to pay for it, yeah? And I think you can do both. Of course, you can go into streaming market, but please don't forget the hardware market. Don't forget the disc market. Mm. Yeah? And the, 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 the strategy of Dolby and of the music industry, especially on, on Universal, is really to get to get uh, or to concentrate on streaming. They're investing a lot of money in streaming. Mm -hmm. And Tidal, of course, Tidal is nice to have. And uh, Tidal is nice to have it with an Apple TV 4K. But if you compare and you need to do it with your Trinoff, I did it now with some uh, musics which were available on Tidal. And later on, like this one here, this brand new, you know, Yellow, the band or uh, the group Yellow? Mm, no. Maybe. Okay, good. Yellow is a fantastic, um, what is it called? Oh, electronic sound. And it's, 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 it's amazing, the sound okay. of them. And this was available only on Tidal. And I heard that they were not so happy about it, that their new album was only on Tidal. So they have the chance to decide to make it on a poor audio. And if you compare this mm. to the Tidal one, I need to go to my turn off. And to go up with a volume of around about 12 to 14 dB. Otherwise, yeah. I I have not the same level by my streaming. So it's so low in the in the in the headroom and in all yeah. the dynamics. So I'm very happy that I have it now here on this disc. This is called poor audio. Oh, interesting. Yeah. I mean I mean, I think you could tell. I mean, everything seems to be everything is moving towards streaming. I mean, they're dropping all the big movies this year on streaming. And if you think they're they're going to save a lot of money by not printing movies as well, and they're going to save a lot of money by not releasing movies in theaters, and just everything everything is just streaming. You know what I mean? I absolutely know what you mean because I'm also a streamer. Yeah, also of course I'm I'm streaming in the moment and I like streaming. But as again, when you are streaming, why you stop selling the disc? I'm also willing to buy the discs. 
So you can do both. And in the moment, they are only concentrating on the streaming. So the streaming guys made a good job, I think. They are really concentrating also on picture quality and sound. Picture yeah. quality, I think, is very good. Sound can be better. But on the yeah. other side, here in Germany, we have the problem that a lot of German tracks have no high-definition sound. They have normal Dolby digital sound. Yeah. If you take a look on an international disc, which is produced now in Hollywood, they make a world disc for the whole world to save money. Okay, on the disc is one high definition English track, and then is Turkey, Spain, Italian, Portuguese, Poland, and India, and whatever tracks also on there. And they need space, so everybody of them has only Dolby Digital or maybe Dolby Digital Plus. Yeah. So the automatically answer, which is normally coming, that this picture quality on the audio quality is much better than on streaming, is not every time the way because yeah. the direction and quality is going in the wrong direction, from my understanding, by the audio. Mm -hmm. and there is a market also, I think there's a huge market for people which like to buy the discs yeah I mean I got a lot of people on my subscribers they, they love the physical media um, I like physical media too but then yeah, at the same time I, I see the convenience for digital and I'm, I'm a big fan of Cloud Escape so I love having the Cloud Escape I still get the physical media quality Maya, it's a lot for you here's a not a lot I need to have a yacht <laughs> <laughs> and can kaleidoscape is only allowed to have to use here in europe in international water <laughs> yeah you can't you can't get it there huh it's a it's a right problem yeah we like it yeah of course huh. what's uh what's your main uh what's your big seller there like AVRs, separates, like what do you what do you deal with most? um we had a lot of luck in the last years uh you know at first, we, 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 we met the guys from Dolby, then the Auro guys, and then we spoke with them, okay, when it's coming to the private customer and to the living rooms, and they were only rolling with the eyes and said, we can't tell you because we don't know. And then at this time, we were working with, uh, Pion with uh, Pioneer, with Denon and Murrens. And then I've got the phone call from the Denon guys that said, hey, we will be the first which will integrate the Dolby Atmos and you need to buy for 149 euro a kind of voucher and then you can install Auro 3D. That was the first time. That was not integrated in the machines. You need to pay additionally 149 euro to mm -hmm. get the update for Auro 3D. And... Um, but it was okay, absolutely. That was the first thing that we had the luck that we were working with the right manufacturers. And the second thing is, and this is something I speak also to the loudspeaker industry, I think the loudspeaker industry was really sleeping when the our, when the 3D systems were coming into the market because most of them were not really designing loudspeakers for 3D audio, especially for installing on the wall or maybe under the ceiling. Mm -hmm. And we had luck. We are working with a company. It's called Dali. You know Dali? It's a Danish manufacturer. Mm. Dali is a big manufacturer in oh, Dali, Denmark. Yeah. Yeah. Dali, D-A-L-I, yeah. Dali. And they had just some months before shown us a loudspeaker, which is really compact, aluminum housing. And in the back is, um, a, a, is a holding system, which is really flexible. So you can adjust the whole loudspeaker really easily. And we need to have an adjustable loudspeakers for the right mm. angle. So this is our most sold <laughs> loudspeakers in the last six years for people which like to have only four additional loudspeakers. And they combined it with Bowers and Wilkins and with Canton and with our Focal, Klipsch and whatever. Because most of the companies have not really designed loudspeakers for this market. That's a little bit crazy. So the, the, the answer for my for your question is Dan and Marans. We, we were with Pioneer and I saw your, your discussion with Pioneer and Onkyo. Mm -hmm. And in open words, I'm a little bit more pessimistic about what, 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 what happened with these companies in the next few weeks and months. And uh, so Dan and Marans is alive. Arkham is now coming with, with 3D sound. The Arkham guys, yeah, this is a Dali. And the product is called Fasong. F-A-Z-O-N. Fasong. It's a very compact one. Dali, Fasong. Opticon, yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, Here, nice. yeah Fasong Siri. There's a Fasong Siri, yeah. And uh, the big ones is sold and it's not available but the small ones the fasong sat this is a uh, very compact ah, the, the fasong go a little bit down fasong sat fasong here the fasong sat this is a very compact loudspeaker they have a very wide angle oh, see, uh, yeah. really fantastic uh from the, because we like to have really the feeling that we are surrounded by the sound and that's working mm -hmm. very well the prices here in germany around about 280 290 euro it's again include tax 
you know we have in germany 19 percent tax so it's it's wow. a very good price value 19 percent. goodness yes of course we have 19 yeah <laughs> that's crazy and somebody needs to pay the business here and, and all the governments <laughs> <laughs> wow i thought six percent was a lot <laughs> no 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 we are number one <laughs> <laughs> Oh. Okay, and this is one of the loudspeakers, and um, of course they have also reflective units, and this is one of our main main supplier for for, for the loudspeakers. Yeah. And Arkham was now coming, and I spoke with the Arkham engineer and the with with, with the chief of engineering um, in uh, beginning of last year, and I asked him why are you now offering Oro, and he said yes, it's because the up mixer. We know that the content is not so much, but the up mixer is fantastic, especially yeah. when you hear also music. So that was also one reason. Now you heard uh, maybe that Yamaha is now coming with Aurora 3D and, to and two uh, top models. Really? Yes. Huh. You didn't know? Interesting. I didn't know that, yeah. I oh, know it's that. fine. I, I, can... haven't, I actually haven't, even, I haven't had any uh, Yamaha receivers or products, except for this last one. This uh, little Yeah, receiver. Yamaha makes a lot of yeah. secrets by presenting the products. <laughs> it's not so easy to speak later on about this. <laughs> Spoiler alert, guys. Yamaha's yeah, getting yeah. Oro. They have a lot of they have a lot of uh, NDAs and whatever. Yeah, it's dangerous <laughs> to visit Yamaha. As oh, a so you're a, so you're an Arcam dealer, huh? How, what happened with yeah? That? We did it. We did it with What happened with the AV40? When I when I reviewed the AV40 when it first came out, I think I was like the first one. Um, probably the worst processor I've heard. Is, yes. Is it fixed now? Uh, most of them, yes. They had to wait next time six months later and then to bring a product which is a little bit stable, more stable. Yeah. And this is the reason why we asked, why we why we stopped the, the sales. Because of yeah. course, when I'm checking this and I see that this is a bug or this is a problem, this is a problem, we stop it. And we speak with the engineers, we'd like to support the guys, but we are not willing to sell the product actively into the market. Mm -hmm. Only if somebody likes to have it extremely, then we tell it to him and they said, yes, okay, I'm, 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 I like to be a beta tester. So <laughs> I like to have this experience. Now, now it's really a good product. I like the Icon yeah. product. It's a fantastic quality, but the software is a tough thing in, 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 in this kind of machines. It's really a yeah. tough thing. Yeah. Huh. I got mm -hmm. the, I got recently, I got the audio control, which is, I think is based on, based on the Arcan. So I'll be hooking that up this week, and I, I'm hoping that it uh, was isn't as buggy as the Arcam was, because Arcam I couldn't even use it, it was so bad. Yeah, so I'm really interested on on what happened this industry and this year with the industry with the with the with the, with the uh, AV receivers. You know that the AKM problem is really a tough yeah. problem. So mm -hmm. it can happen that we will have some of the products for months not available. Yeah. It can really happen. So it's really tough. They are working day and night to, to, to find alternative solutions on this. So they have a lot of, um, they had a lot to do. I visited two years ago the factory of um, Dan and Marins. So there's a, I have a video on this because it was not allowed to make some pictures only by, by, by running. So I was all the time running through the factory with my video camera yeah. to see some pictures, how they produce the, uh, they produce um, only the high-end products of them uh, in, in this very famous factory. Okay. And it was really interesting how much handwork it is to produce a, 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 an heavy receiver. So it's a lot of handwork there. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, everybody can always buy uh, Trinovs since it's, they don't use chips. Did you visit Paris in Trinov? Yeah, it's in France. Are you a, yeah. are you a Trinov dealer? Yes, we are Trinov dealer since one and a half year, and uh, together with our daughter company, we have a daughter or brother company which is focused on the constructions of home cinema, and both of us are selling Trinov, and we were last year really successful. Yeah, we made a lot of nice interviews with the guys of them, and we have really explained the system and the idea behind the Trinov uh, software. So, um, well. It, we were very happy, and the people are more happy. The owners are more happy. That's the most important thing. Yeah. <laughs> what about uh, what about Storm? You guys deal with Storm Audio? Uh, I know the first machines before Storm. It was an hour. It was a machine from uh, Auro. Um, it was our. Uh, we always call it Auro. It was uh, the, the, the hardware was coming from 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 Wilfred from a I don't know subsidiary or whatever of the Galaxy and of the Auro 3D guys, mm -hmm. and he had to sell the whole company to the guys which made then the Storm Audio. And um, it's nice to have, but in open words, the turn off is in a lot of things much better. Really? Yeah. Interesting. As a software side, as a, from the software, turn off software is amazing, and it's it's the only and only for our understanding. The mm -hmm. whole possibility and the possibilities of the uh, what is it called of the optimizer. That's a big. Um, 
difference. I hear Lingdorf is pretty popular too. Yeah, you guys uh, deal with it. Yeah, it's coming. Yeah, yeah, yeah it's coming. coming. Look, uh, what, what 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 we did is it was around about six or seven years ago, and I didn't know we had a customer which is also very active in the AVS forum. It's a German guy, and he has a very professional cinema and it was allowed for me to make a movie in his cinema there was a barco and there was a big dolby and a big screen and or whatever and he said to me i like to have a trend of altitude i said what is trend of altitude i don't know what is it yeah it's in france and they come with the product and it's not fixed it's not really finished and i know i need to wait for a lot of software but i like to have it and i know the guy which was the importer of trend of in germany i said to the guy hey i have a customer he likes to have the trend of altitude can i have yes he said i organize okay we organized him he had it and that's a fact this was the first trend of in germany which was sold to a guy while the end of the development time and this machine is on the same features and benefits like the machines which are coming today from the factory yeah. Nothing is, this is so amazing. It's fantastic yeah. that you can have, it's so open and you make the updates and you make this and this and it's, yeah, it's computer. <laughs> it's on the same status like the machines which are coming now from the factory. It's a, yeah, it's I did a, I have my review. I think I'm going to do it up tomorrow. I've been working on it all day today, which I should be finishing up. And yeah, it's the, the, uh, the basically, I, I wrapped it up. I said what you just said. I said, those people that bought it in 2015, it's the exact same machine as it is in 2021. There's no other product that I can think of that can grow and change as that product could do it. Like, there's Absolutely. nothing else I can think of, yeah. Yeah, and you know, we know a lot of companies in the past which were promising us, yes, we have now a new technology and we can make updates for the hardware and so. And latest yeah. after the second or third year was it empty and it was stopped. There was nothing coming with updates. Yeah. Maybe one generation, that was it. And here on the Trinoff guys, they really do the fantastic job. And now you can make hardware upgrade if you like with HDMI 2.1. Yeah. Then now they have a new warranty system for for the customers. Also, I like the guys, really good guys. Yeah, yeah, very good stuff. High tech nerds, but very yeah. sympathetic high tech nerds. <laughs> yeah, I do. I, I did. Uh, I shot the review, like the settings, half the settings. I don't even know what they are, so I just kind of have to like read through it because you have to be like real uh, pro calibrator to understand what all this stuff is. I'm just like, listen, you, you have to be like a real professional to really dig into the settings because a lot of the stuff is not for, for normal folks. Absolutely. That's the reason yeah. why we install it by our own yeah. people. Also when we sell a product, we, sell, we, we install it by our own people. And later on, it's very easy to go out from outside with the online connection yeah. to him and to, to help him, to support him and so But the basic installation is done by people from us. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I mean, you can get up and going by yourself. I mean, the, the user interface is, is pretty simple for, for the most part. Um, but you think, so do you, do you have contacts that would come on from Dolby to talk with us? I have, I, of course I have contacts to Dolby. Yeah. 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 You should set that up. We could talk. And about... here in Europe, uh, I know the guys, uh, I am working very well with the guy. It's called David Siegler. Maybe he looks here together with us. He's a great guy. He's a guy which is, um, supporting the studios, the audio studios, the film studios with the know-how and with all the technology and so on. And he helps me by making something which is maybe interesting for 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 your 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 audience he makes me to make the snippets you remember i sent to you yeah, yeah, yeah. with snippets yeah i think because we have the problem that um that we have not saw really on a high level the dolby atmos movies available that i was really focusing last year on music in 3d sound and i, I have something of this here's an example of this you know what it is this is john williams uh -huh. He was giving a concert in January last year in Vienna. And this is recorded in Dolby Atmos. And it is absolutely amazing. When you hear the first seconds, when you hear only the people which are the in the, in the audience, the, like the breathing, you are with really the feeling you are not sitting in your small living room, you are sitting in the music hall. So mm -hmm. this is one of the best Dolby Atmos uh, music available. And a lot of other things. So the music, is done, they make a really good job, and it is really easy to understand the, the benefit of 3D sound by music. So more and more um, artists are deciding to make music in Atmos. Of course, one is then later on for Tidal, but the other ones are making this poor audios. And I like to explain you the poor audio because this is a product which is international possible. A poor audio is a Blu-ray which is only for music content. They are using the Blu-ray, but they have only music on it. 
And they have four tracks maximum. They have one track as an example in stereo, one in Dolby normal or in DTS 5.1, then in Oro 3D and then in Dolby Atmos. And if you like to switch while you hear the track, you are pushing on the one of the four color buttons on your remote control. And then you are switching between the tracks and you can hear directly the difference. And you have maximum 24 bit 96 kilohertz. Mm -hmm. So it's really on a high level quality. Yeah. And it's playable with every Blu-ray player. It is a development which is done mostly from some German studios here, which especially one, Stefan Bock, and it's more and more coming international. So if you have a chance to get a poor audio, I sent you maybe after the call here, some of them, you will really like it. So that was the reason why we make the snippet. So if you have the snippet at home, you can hear a part of the track with your equipment very easily. You mm -hmm. re record the file or you go with your iPhone, click on the link, and then you can send it by AirPlay to Apple TV 4K in Dolby Atmos. You can send it by AirPlay, and then you can hear it on your Dolby Atmos equipment. Really simple. You get a feeling for how it sounds to have music in 3D. Hmm, interesting. Okay, yep. I know we can get, uh, I know a title, the John Williams album is on title in Atmos as well. Is it an Atmos adverb? Okay, but then it's at 20, at 12 dB uh, more silent. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, man, if you could set something up with Dolby, and Dolby doesn't like to email me back. I don't know what's going on with those guys over there. But uh, if you could set something up with I Dolby. Can, I can arrange something. Yeah, let's, all, let's, let's get on and discuss uh, sound mixing with Dolby. I would like to know, like, the ins and outs and, like, you know, channel limitations and differences between... If there, if there even is like a soundbar mix that you know you always hear, Disney movies are mixed no, for soundbars. Or... Sound you, do you think they make a special soundbar mix? <laughs> I don't think so. I no. just think soundbars don't sound no, good. No, <laughs> no, no, no. no. Um, as the soundbars are coming more and more, next uh, on the what is it? On this week is coming a new soundbar from uh, Denon in yeah. with Dolby Atmos support. Yeah, Atmos, yeah. And uh, I heard the soundbar that was really a prototype made by a 3D printer uh, with Auro 3D. Yeah. And it sounds amazing, but the problem was then Corona, so they have to stop all the flights to the big manufacturers, so it have delay of one one and a half year. So all the three D sound systems you can have in the future supported by Soundbus, and um, the mix is the same. In open words, for Soundbus, it sounds good, but this is not an alternative for a layout with nine loudspeakers. Yeah, but for Soundbus, it's not bad. Yeah, I think the best soundbar I heard was. Probably that Sennheiser Ambio. Have you heard that? <laughs> yeah, like it's yeah. it was supported by Fraunhofer Institute. Yeah. You know Fraunhofer? Fraunhofer uh, University. I uh, heard that, of it. Yeah, it's uh, that's uh, the the guys which makes the MP3 format years yeah, ago. Yeah, yeah. And they have some very clever guys there in the audio department. And I saw uh, a prototype from the one, but in open words, I like it very much. Yeah, but it's not so flexible by by, by your sitting or seat position. You need to have really have a look for to have the right position. Yeah, as you can have also bad positions, and then you have not a good feeling. But yeah. from the whole sound, it is really good. Yeah. Uh, I got a question here from Steve Smith. Patrick, talk yeah. about Lux from Morton. Ich habe das auf Apple Music nicht. What? 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 Uh, on the screen there it says talk about Lux from Morton. Lux from ah yeah, Lux from Morton. Uh, you know Lux, uh, Steve Udev, I know him. It's a customer of us. It's a German okay. guy. He is very familiar with three D sound systems. <laughs> <laughs> um, we have yeah, you know Morton Lindberg. Morton Lindberg. There is called Two L. Yeah, I think in Europe there's a lot of happening with music and three D sound. Uh, you can you can you can get a lot of more. A content, I think. We need to uh, export it to U.S. <laughs> uh, so oh, there is in Scandinavia. It's Morten Lindberg. Morten Lindberg is a guy which is producing a lot of, in the last years, a lot of 3D surround sound music, especially Morten Lindberg. Yeah. Oh. Um, 3D sound formats uh, of classic music, especially classic music. And there is a very nice story. He was, I think, round about 30, 31 times nominated for the Grammy. Oh, okay. And he has never won it. 
So the whole Scandinavian countries were really a little bit crying when he was nominated and nominated and he never won it. And last year he won it the first time. So that was big party in the whole country that Martin Lindberg won a Grammy for a fantastic album. Um, and he is one of the uh, most active persons which is supporting surround sound and especially focused on Auro and Dolby Atmos. Hmm, yeah. Interesting. And the label is called 2L. 2 like the number and then L. Yeah, I've never heard of that. Here's another one. In excess concert oh. in Wembley. Yeah, this is the guy. Here's the Grammy. Here you see. Yeah. Ah, ah. Yeah, 36. He had 36 American Grammy nominations and never won. That was a <laughs> world record. <laughs> <laughs> wow. And last year he won it the first time. So big party. Yeah, a 60 second Grammy award winner. <laughs> yeah, he has uh, fantastic, fantastic albums, really fantastic albums. Hmm, high res, okay, how to check it out? I see. Yeah, so, you understand well. that we have much more better yeah. music productions in 3D sound than movie productions in 3D yeah, sound. Right? <laughs> oh, we got MQA, we got DSD, 5.1. Yeah, yeah. Oh, these are, are these downloadable? What are these? Oh, you can Pardon? download these. You can download these, huh? Uh, it can be, yeah, it can be that okay. he has some demos oh. also there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll check that but out. I think you can buy it also in the US. Hmm. Okay. Yeah, I'll check that out. Check also here, in excess again. Also in excess. This is a new. This is also a concert which was filmed on thirty-five millimeter. So it's it's a fantastic four K transfer, mm -hmm. and they produce it also in Dolby Atmos. It's a concert of nineteen hundred ninety-one. Available in 4K UHD and Blu-ray, and it's in Dolby Atmos, and it is the smallest Dolby Atmos logo I ever saw. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they're hard, they're hard to read. <laughs> you can't you can't read it. As they yeah. have read. Take it away. We have a very nice story here in Germany with a very with a very famous German artist, and he was also making a first time and an, uh, all the music of him in the new style, um, recorded in Woodstock in the Woodstock studios, in Dolby Atmos. Huh. But what they did is they printed that on the cover, not the Dolby Atmos logo. They make a new print with the name 3D Sound Master. I said, huh. why is it 3D yeah, Sound Master? That? Why not Dolby Atmos? Yeah, Dolby Atmos is maybe too complicated for the end user. He don't understand what it means. I said, OK. <laughs> <laughs> It's Some interesting. nice stories on the market. Mm -hmm. Well, that's awesome, man. Um, but definitely, man, let's let's get some Dolby in here. We'll have a little discussion about mixing, mixing audio, and how come we get subpar audio releases on for home? Because I would love to. I would love to always be bombarded with sound all the time. I mean, my favorite one was still Midway from last year. You know, with the airplanes and everything. I was surprised. I, I saw your number one to number 10. Yeah. And I was surprised that you said the midway because I have not really, uh, I, I was so uh, a little bit uh, irritated on the picture quality. It looks so like, like, uh, like a kind of animation sometimes. It looks not good from the picture. I, I, I have not seen the whole movie because I couldn't, I didn't like the style. Okay. From the sound, it is nice. I saw yeah. the, I saw the uh, 19, uh, what is it? 19? 17. Yeah. 17. I saw it in the IMAX. It was filmed with the Ari camera, as a business yeah. camera from the Munich factory. Yeah. And it's fantastic. I like this movie very much. And I absolutely fully agree with your, uh, what is it called, certification or with your winning number one, this movie. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Great movie. Great movie. I forgot about that when I did a, my, my half year list. But yeah, amazing looking movie. Good sounding movie, too. I still think Midway is better sounding. It doesn't look as good, but sound wise, I think it's awesome. Sound wise, was good. Huh? Yeah, good. Yeah. Okay. But the movie, The movie does kind of suck, though. You have, yeah. you have, you know the movie. I spoke a lot, uh, several times now about this German movie. It is Jim Knopf and the uh, oh God, a train driver. You know this? It's a, it's a book for kids. Jim Knopf, Jim Button, Jim mm. Button. I sent you some links later on. Did you know? Another thing is, did you know that if you have a Dolby Atmos track with uh, five or seven loudspeakers on the bed layer, and then you have the four on the top. And then you make um, an upgrade to six loudspeakers. 
mm. that very often you have only the center loudspeakers then and the loudspeakers on the front and on the back are still. Did you know this? Really? So just the center works? Yes. Just the middle row. Huh. I wonder why that is. If you take a look on Kong as an example and take a look on the, uh, you, I, I saw your video with the headphone. I know the Exofield ones very yeah. well. And yeah, you were very that. impressed by the movie, um, Steven Spielberg, what was the movie you saw on this with a, with a race? Oh, yeah, Ready Player One. Ready Player One, yeah. yeah. Check it with Ready Player One. You have the four, and if you are starting with the six, you are surprised that you have it mostly only in the center. Hmm. Or Kong. A lot of movies, especially also, again, uh, movies from Hollywood, have not the full programmable, I would say, Atmos track. They are working with a kind of virtual center. That means if you have the four loudspeakers, then it's perfect. But if you have really true two loudspeakers on the ceiling in the middle, then it's all focused on the two loudspeakers on the middle and not on all the six. Okay. On the movie of Mission Impossible, they made a great job. They are supporting all the six loudspeakers. But a lot of other movies only supporting the center loudspeakers then. So you have not really the benefit of the six loudspeakers on the ceiling. That's weird. Is that I have to only do got four. <laughs> Pardon? I've only got four. I can't fit six. Then it's enough. Weird. Then it's enough. <laughs> <laughs> That's really weird. I wonder if the uh, Oro, I mean the Oro, the um, Trino of remapping would, would change that. Probably not. I don't think it would. Yeah, you can do this, of course. Hmm. We work now with front lights for the future. But all right, man, let's wrap this up. Thanks, Patrick, for coming yes. on the show. Hopefully we get you back here soon with the Dolby guys, maybe the DTS guys. That would be cool, too. Um, but, but tell the folks where they can find you and contact you if they want to get a home theater system. Uh, it's on groby.tv. It's really simple. And they can also find a bunch of your videos on YouTube as well. If you are not German, you probably have a hard time understanding what's going on. But um, I love the home theater tours that you used to do back in the day. I don't think you've done it in a little while, but those were always cool. I remember before I started YouTube, I would watch those home theater tours all the time. Uh, cool. But thanks for coming on the channel, man. Really appreciate it. Thanks for some of the insights on on the business and also on your, on your knowledge of home theater. So that's great. And uh, guys, if you guys want to check out the, the audio portion of this, it'll be on Spotify, Apple, iTunes, uh, Podcasts, wherever, Anchor. So be sure to like, share, subscribe. Thanks again, Patrick. We'll see you guys again in the next video. It was a pleasure, and I wish you the best time. In your, I, I, I like very much on your cinema tour the popcorn machine and all the different tastes that you have there. Oh, yeah, it's good. It's, it it's looks good. very great, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, have a nice time. Thank you very much. See you later, guys.